1991. Advisory Opinion 13 derived from Lilly State as the primary source of repayment. The client requests only the income capitalization approach for this office building evaluation. If the appraiser determines that the income capitalization approach alone is sufficient to produce credible assignments an evaluation of this property based solely on the income approach can be performed. However, if the sales comparison approach is necessary for credible results, the appraiser should discuss the necessity of developing and reporting it with the client. The appraiser is ultimately responsible and must include whatever research and analysis is necessary for credible results in the scope of work. When reporting evaluations, Appraisers need to be aware that the evaluation content, described in the agencies reporting the results of an evaluation guideline, may differ from the content required for appraisal reports under Standard 2, see Advisory Opinion 11. Item it is important that the contents of all appraisal reports satisfy the requirements of Standard 2 as well as all applicable assignment conditions. In many cases, an appraisal report may be required, but in other cases, a restricted appraisal report may be sufficient if expanded to include all of the content requirements for an evaluation. In addition to the requirements in USPAP, an appraisal report used in an evaluation assignment must also comply with the Interagency Appraisal and Evaluation Guidelines. The December 2010 Agency's Guidelines include the following report requirements. 13. Evaluation content and evaluation should contain sufficient information detailing the analysis, assumptions, and conclusions to support the credit decision, and evaluation's content should be documented in the credit file or reproducible. The evaluation should, at a minimum, identify the location of the property, provide a description of the property and its current and projected use, Thus, provide an estimate of the property's market value in its current physical condition, use and zoning designation as of the effective date of the evaluation, that is, the date that the analysis was completed, with any limiting condition. Describe the methods the institution used to confirm the property's current physical condition and the extent to which an inspection was performed. Describe the analysis that was performed and the supporting information that was used in valuing the property. Thus, describe the supplemental information that was considered when using an analytical method technological tool. Indicate all sources of information used in the analysis as applicable. To value the property, including external data sources, such as market sales databases and public tax and land records. Property-specific data, such as previous sales data for the subject property, tax assessment data, and comparable sales information, evidence of a property inspection, photos of the property, description of the neighborhood, or local market conditions. Include information on the preparer when an evaluation is performed by a person, such as the name and contact information, and signature, electronic or other legally permissible signature, of the preparer. A conclusion and evaluation, when performed by an individual acting as an appraiser, is an appraisal. In addition to complying with USPAP, the appraiser must be aware of and comply with any additional assignment conditions and reporting requirements imposed on the assignment. 12 MCUA regulations do not contain an exemption from the appraisal requirements specific to member business loans. Advisory Opinions 2018-2019 Edition The Appraisal Foundation